What's going on, everybody? Welcome to SWAT MMA, where we're smoking weed and talking mixed martial arts. This is episode number 57. I'm your host, Jared, with my co-host, Paul. What's up? And we're coming to you from the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. Happy New Year, everybody. It's our yeah. first show since December 18th. It's been a little bit of time. Yeah, shit. Welcome back, everybody. Yes, thanks, everybody on YouTube, everybody <laughs> in WBUZ95, all of our other podcast outlets. Hope everybody had a cool holiday season. Happy fucking New Year. Yeah. All that good shit. Today's episode, man, it's going to be all about UFC 246, yep, Cowboy versus Connor. Before we dive into that, though, let's do our first of the year for our weed of the week. Smoke weed every day. Today we're smoking on a very rare strain at the moment. This is London Pound Cake, which is bred by Cookie Fam Genetics. This is a proprietary blend of theirs. You cannot even buy seeds of this right now, and no one knows the exact genetics, except a Sunset Sherbert crossed with some kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty damn tasty, though. This is a, uh, it's a hybrid indica dominant and that's all the info that's available for this there you go uh, if you're lucky enough to uh be in california or somewhere like nevada where you can find this strain definitely pick it up though it's pretty oh, fucking yeah. tasty oh yeah you know all these reviews are talking about berry aromas and citrus this now i don't really taste all that but it does taste very delicious yeah it's got good taste too. and it seems to be hella stony yeah for sure and the buds are beautiful man very very big fluffy buds like i like weed that fluffs up yet it's still dense if you know yeah, what i'm I've literally saying gotten two different nugs <clears throat> one was fucking five grams the other one was six and a half yeah you're getting them big fat nugs exactly yeah. nice thick delicious herb that's what i'm talking about man <laughs> Fucking awesome. London pound cake. That sounded like terrible. Didn't that was awesome. That's fucking <laughs> <laughs> thick and delicious weed. Mm. That's what I miss from Colorado, man. I used to get the fucking big colas out there. I don't know. I suppose you can. There's some dispensaries out here that sell cola buds like by the ounce, but that shit's so crazy expensive. I'm not paying fucking four hundred dollars for some cola ounce. No. It's not gonna happen, dude. I was watching this uh, Vice show. It had this uh, this guy who said he pays six hundred dollars for premium weed ounces in New York. That's crazy. Yeah, right. That's even more expensive than the most expensive dispensary prices here in Nevada, which is one of the more expensive places you can buy fucking weed right now. Yeah, so it's six hundred dollars. Damn. I was like, what the fuck? Crazy. Can you believe out there? It's still illegal out there, too. That's why. All these places, we get so used to it. Like, I moved from Colorado, legal weed, to here, legal weed. Yeah. <coughs> so, even though we didn't have legal weed when I first moved here, but whatever, we had medical. Did you do anything big for the new year, man, here in Las Vegas? Nope. I didn't Went either. <laughs> I didn't do shit for... New Year's, I don't... Everybody thinks you live in Vegas, you go out and party on New yeah. Year's. I don't. It's actually the opposite. Like, I don't think most of the locals insane. really do that. Yeah. It's like a... It's a big deal here. A lot of fucking fireworks, man. Fuck yeah, it was crazy. They I was do. down there, but it was... Because I was working, not because I was actually celebrating. It was terrible. I had to freaking... <clears> I got there at 4, and I couldn't get off the strip until like 3 or 4 a.m. Because oh. they had the Las Vegas Boulevard closed off. And I was on the opposite side... So you couldn't cut through. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Awful. <clears throat> Awful. Dude, they do way more fireworks for New Year's than anything else here. Way more than 4th of July. Oh, yeah, for sure. More Because, like, right when you thought it was over, they did, like, another five minutes of fireworks after that. Like, it, it always, like, dies down midway, and it's like, hot psych. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. But, no, I stayed home and chilled. I don't like, I don't like drinking on New Year's Eve, man. I like to start the New Year off with some weed. Yeah. And uh and then feeling good, not hung over. I feel you. I'm not much of a drinker either. I can smoke all day, but I'm not I am a lightweight when I drink. Yeah, me too, just as I don't anymore. Yeah, I used too. to. I used to party like a dumbass with alcohol, but whatever everybody does <laughs> at some point, right? Yeah. Or most everybody. Yeah. Ooh man, we're hitting these dabs before the show too, man. Yeah. 
some tangerine fucking shatter. Mm. That was pretty juicy. Yeah. That's got me pretty baked. This weed is nice. This bowl's topped off with some keef, too. Yep. Hope y'all are listening. They're smoking on some fine herb right now, too. Dude, let's dive into the UFC, though, man. This, virtually this whole show is going to be about the return of Conor McGregor right here in Las Vegas, right down the street from us. Just a couple days from this show being on WBUZ 95, two days after we air here, we are going to... Uh, we're going to see what's up. What's up for real? We're hearing a lot of noise about how Connor's looking great. A lot of people overlooking Cowboy. Yeah. Is Cowboy going to kick his ass? You think there'll be an upset, Paul? No. I think Cowboy might come out and just smoke him, just lay him out. No way. Leave Connor in the dust. No. Drop him. Rattle him like Khabib did. <coughs> no. Connor fall down and Donald will sink in and do a classic submission. No. Just some vintage Cowboy. Everybody will be like, oh, and then Connor will come back and demand a rematch. No. No, I don't think so either. I don't think any of that's happening. Why would you even say that? I'm just, just playing that. a little devil's advocate here. No, you know, it could happen. No, Con- I get it. Cowboy um, could come out and win. He's a good he fighter, could. man. But I feel like if he's going to win, it's going to be like deep into the rounds or by decision rather than. So this interview came out. John Cavanaugh with the Mac Life just a few days ago. And part of it, Cavanaugh said that basically Conor McGregor knows more about fighting than he, Cavanaugh, knows and everybody else on the team put together and that Conor was basically in charge of the training camp. And there's people now that are spinning that into a pretty big red flag that this means that Conor's going to be underprepped, not doing shit, and uh, going to wind up getting his ass kicked again. That's where that narrative is kind of spinning from if you're of that camp. I don't know. Uh, like, we were watching the recent Ariel Hawani interview. Yeah, the big just, ESPN interview. It was interview. literally released yeah. right before we started the show here. And um, I saw a different guy than than what they're saying, you know? And it a was, different guy was, in Connor? Yeah, he looks he looks ready to go. He looks a lot... He looks focused. He looks like he's, he's the guy he was before. He looks Maybe. pretty solid, too. Like, he's noticeably larger than he typically yeah, is sure. at this time before a fight. Like, that's... Yeah. Well, he's fighting at 170, so... He's, and he said he was already on weight. So. Yeah, he said he weighs 170 just in life, in yeah. general. He claims to be under that at the time of that interview. I think he's throwing shade right there. I don't think he's weighing the 160. I think that's bullshit. But, but, I do, <clears> but then he did say that he could easily make 55 for this fight if he had to. I'm glad he's not. Yeah. I would be, I think what he weighs on fight day will tell us a lot. If he comes in at 168, 169 again, then he's not <laughs> really serious about long-term welterweight. If he comes in at like 170, I think that says, I know it's just a couple pound difference, but that couple pounds says a lot. Not necessarily. To me. What if he can't, if he comes in at 165, shows that he's still Donald size and he's just a little bit faster. Ooh. ooh, ooh. Monster fucking puff. Try not to if cough. he were to come in at 65, I think that <laughs> wouldn't be that big of a deal. <laughs> See, I, I think it would. Because he's going to be giving up some size then. He's Cowboy's gonna definitely going to be 170, 171. He's going he's gonna to be giving up size either way on the le- on, in, in the height. Well, I, sh- I should be more specific. He's going to be giving up weight, like more considerable amount of weight. Not necessarily. Cowboys never weighed under 170 for a welterweight bout. Well, Cowboys also the same in the same kind of place that where he said in multiple interviews when he fights 170 he doesn't really cut any weight. He said that. This is true. He has said that. It's not like It's not like he's a monster welterweight at all. Not, he's a little yeah, undersized he's, he's, to welter. Yeah, he's kind of a lankier guy rather than he doesn't have the build. Kind of how Connor is. Connor's is, Connor could maybe fight up in this weight class if he was <laughs> if he was built like Tyron Woodley is because Tyron Woodley is Connor McGregor. Yeah, he's size. five foot nine. He's yeah. just ginormous. He's got ginormous, very hips, muscular, ginormous yeah. freaking shoulders. You know, he's a wide dude. Whereas if I obviously I'm not saying Connor should do this, but if he were to fight at 170, he would possibly need to put on enough size to walk around at like 170. He looks like he started that process. 
He's not. I'm not saying he's Tyrone Woodley size. Don't no, misunderstand. No, no. But I'm saying that he he's, does, he does he's, look considerably bigger. He's for considerably sure. bigger, and it's yeah. more muscular. It wasn't like before when he was training for 155 and wound up at 170 and was still the frame of a 155. Or he looks bigger. Like like well, Poirier is bigger now. Here's the thing: the first time he fought 170, it was on eight days' notice, and he started eating steaks exactly. and, and doing nothing. Acting but fool. then, yeah. But if we're talking about the second time he fought 170, he actually was in considerably good shape, and he he his body tested went all five rounds. So, right, I mean, but he's bigger now than he was then. It's muscular, muscle wise, he's putting on more muscle. Well, side. I think he's just naturally sure. a bigger guy now than he was when he was fighting. He's before. got that going from too. He's thirty one you know, years 31 old. Thirty one years old yeah. now, and people say you know, I don't know, being being a father and doing doing this. The stuff that he's done since he's, you know, stepped away from all the the legal stuff that has gone in over the last, I don't know, 18 months or whatever. It's like, it seems like he's re, he's, you know, he's, he's like reinvigorated. He's like reinfo- he's refocused. He's seemed very zen. Let's talk about the Ariel interview. Yeah. Like, like you, you mentioned it right there. Finally, Ariel's been catching some shit from other journalists for not asking about these sexual assault allegations. And he asked him. And he asked him directly. basically twice. twice. Yeah. Actually, like three times. Like he, no, he asked him about three different things, though, altogether. Like, he threw the real simple one. He's like, is there anything that you want to talk about? Like, you know. He goes, he, he goes, do you have anything else pending in your life moving forward? Immediately after talking about the child uh, that he was not the father of. Like, yeah. they brought that up that he was proven not the father of a child, that he's been fighting that in court for two fucking years, and it comes yeah. out, no, that's not my baby. Yeah. And then after that, he said, is there anything else that you, you wanted to discuss, that your, your allegations you have pending? And he was like, no. Right? Yeah. And then he and followed then, it up a few minutes later with... Yeah, and then he was like, well, there's sexual assault allegations. The New York Times has brought up... And what do you have to say to, about those? And he was like, no, no. He vehemently denied, denied it. And then he goes, fuck <clears> that. <throat> yeah, he was like, come on, Ariel. You don't have to fucking ask me. Yeah. But but like, and he just basically summed it up as wanting time. He's like, just yeah. time will prove it. He's like, time I'm learning prove, patience. Yeah. Just just time will, will show this, just like yeah. the other one. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was pretty satisfied with that answer because I kind of think it's bullshit we're talking about this anyways. Yeah. Just because of the, the reason that it's... It's covered under Irish law, and by Irish law, they don't release the names of these people, and you're not supposed yeah. to be yapping about well, it. Well, it's also been a year, though. Like, it's been a fucking year. It's been a year. So what what are we talking about? If this was, if this was a case that was moving forward, there would be. And there's there would zero. Be we know zero about it. There's yeah. zero facts the out only, there to the speculate about. The only facts about. we know about it that he was questioned and then released. Yeah, that's it, and that's just what's asserted by the New York Times. There's no. Yeah backup information for that yeah and that There's doesn't explain and that doesn't explain either. if he was possibly one of a list of suspects that they were investigating and he was questioned released, and nothing stuck and they've moved on like they're not going to release that either way you know what i'm saying so even even if late like connor was saying give me time give me time give me time we'll all see in time we'll all see in time that doesn't even necessarily mean that he has something going on with himself. It, it could also mean that there's possibly other suspects that are in the middle of, you know, being questioned and, and things going on with that same case that he can't even, like, right. you know what I'm saying? He's not, could be not even a part well, of We don't it. know what's going on. You know? We should, in speculation, as it being outside of the situation, is how I, I feel. I feel like there would be some information <clears throat> out there or some kind of further... Or some reason why he wouldn't even be able to leave Ireland if he it's was. It's been a year. Was, yeah, dude. Like if there was, like that was another way kind of Ariel questioned it too. He was like, "Was there anything that was stopped you from leaving the country and getting here?" Exactly. Yeah, I feel like there would be if he was a serious, like <laughs> a serious suspect in a rape case. Like, come on. I don't know, when it comes to this type of thing, we can only look at the facts that are available, and there's nothing really to even speculate on. There's no facts available. Other than he was questioned and released a year ago, yeah. and then possibly there was a second allegation, but we don't know shit about that, if that's even legit or not. Yeah. And so, and then he says, nope, nothing, give me time, you'll see it was all bullshit, and then that's that. Like, what Which else can you exactly say? exactly how it happened when people were talking about when, he, that, when someone was uh, claiming they were, that he had their kid. Exactly. So we can only do that in... There's been some people that want to uh, 
turn that into something more. And I just don't think you really legitimately can. Well, that's just can. the society we live you in. You just want to be angry everyone, about something. Yeah. There's nothing. We don't know any facts. What everyone the fuck can you be angry be about? More. You, there's nothing to speculate. You, if yeah. you think he's guilty, you have nothing to base it on. If you think he's yeah. innocent, you, also, you can only... Yeah. Well, you can base it on the fact that he ain't been arrested. He was yeah, questioned a year ago and released, and there's been nothing else. And he's yeah. free to leave the country and keep making money. And that says something. Yeah, it maybe sure. doesn't say he's innocent, but it certainly says he's not some major fucking suspect with a case about the clothes on his head. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. And if he's proven guilty of something, well, by all means, he'll deserve everything that's fucking thrown at his ass. Yeah, but until then, sure. you can't fucking <clears throat> yeah. make exactly. accusations and act like uh, they're true. Yeah. Especially in another country that releases zero information, not like here in America where we'd have all the fucking deeds. Yeah, exactly. I just said deets. <laughs> I don't even know where that came from. Like, I don't fucking use that word. That's hilarious. <laughs> It's, it's this weed. It's this fucking London pound cake. It's pounded the word deets in my vocabulary. Yeah. All right, so that's enough about the, the Connor bullshit as far as that goes. But yeah. circling back to his training a little bit that he also brought up in the aerial interview that I thought was pretty interesting was his old boxing team from the Crumlin Boxing Club. He is a part of his team. A part of his team, a part of his camp, part of his corner. Yeah. I like that. That's cool. It kind of scares me, though. Because he also alluded to <laughs> that he was going to fight a boxing fight in the near future, either Floyd or Manny Pacquiao for his title. <laughs> Which I don't know how you could really justify that if you're any boxing organization, but go for it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be illegitimate as fuck. But as a Connor fan, admittedly, oh, I'd be like, yep, do it, please. Yep. I don't know if he could fucking win, but I don't know if he could beat Manny. Again. Probably not. But. Probably not. Uh, I mean, come on, can he shoot but his sights Manny, a little lower? There's hey, some chump champs hey, he can pick off. Manny got beat by a school teacher, dude. <laughs> he, I, I bet Connor could beat Jeff Horn. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Jeff Horn beat Manny. So any fucking given fight, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Which is why I was mentioning earlier, Cowboy does have a chance here. We're not trying to shit all over Cowboy. Yeah, I sure. fucking love Cowboy. Dude, Cowboy's, Cowboy's a great Cerrone's fighter, a great but he's fighter. just kind of in the twilight of his career. He's coming off two losses. His chin's not the same after he's, his last two losses. He was wobbled heavily, and the, in the, his last fight, he was knocked out cold. So I mean, or was it cold? No, actually, no. Gaethje pulled back. He could have been hurt bad, yeah. but yeah, Gaethje, Gaethje dropped him, and he was like, "No, nah, it's my friend, dude. Off. Like yeah. I'm gonna fucking, I'm not gonna kill you." <laughs> but uh, dude, I like everything about Justin Gaethje except his manager. I wish he had a different team. Yeah. Well, it, I don't know. Connor, the, the I think, point, was alluding to that a little bit, too, yeah. when he was saying Gaethje was talking shit and being about the rape shit. Yeah. And, of course, he's getting that from Ali. Yeah, for sure. Who is, if you don't know, folks, this also could be Nurm- Nurmagomedov's manager amongst a host of other crazy things, but we won't Which dive into that. I, but. I wonder if that brings <clears> up <throat> any friction between the two if Justin were to get the fight. I don't know. When you make a Khabib's ten fights, I just thought that was just talk. I didn't. He's like Connor. Connor would have to win ten fights in a row oh. to fight him again. I just just wrote that. That's off not his up to him. Silly honestly. shit talking. It's clearly not in his control. Yeah, like, <laughs> like I mean, if the money's there, they're gonna do it. I still don't want to see it. I don't want them to fight again. I I'd know. rather uh, I'd rather see some other things, such as. Well, such as the reason I think this whole fight is happening, which is. George Masvidal? Who's also, let's be honest, not the biggest welterweight who was, in fact, a lightweight up yeah. until recently, fairly recently. Nah, he's been he's been a welterweight for about four years now. Yeah, fairly recently is a bit of a stretch. But, I mean, he fought at 155 for quite a while, and then later in his career he's moved up to 170. Point being, it's not like he was a 185-er cutting yeah, down to 170 like Darren Till. Yeah. Or yeah. not Darren Till, but other examples. Yeah, but he's definitely filled out. Like George was a little bit yeah. on the skinnier George side. George is up to size, but he's now. definitely he's definitely filled out. Absolutely. I would love to see him and Connor go at it. If Connor is who we all want him to be, you know what I'm saying? Or just for just for the sports sake, like when Connor McGregor is good, it's more electric because then the bigger fights happen, and then all the other people fall in line and follow. You know? Oh yeah. Because then. When one guy's making the most money, everybody's making more money. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Which is kind of strange to me because if you look down this card, there's really not many other huge fights, you know? 
No, they're Which diverting that it, salary to the top two. Dude, yeah. even Cowboy, both these guys are getting gigantic paydays. The disclosed Connor payday. About, Connor was talking about he's possibly making 80 mil here. Yeah. That's crazy. What people don't realize is it's he's making ad revenue also because he's got proper twelve a part of his UFC contract. Exactly. So it's he's <clears throat> he's not only getting paid to freaking fight, he's getting paid to for advertising too. And he specifically brought up pay per view cuts from other countries. Yeah. Uh, so Australia, Great Britain, Ireland, Ireland and something else. Well, I was looking at uh, which they're not governed by the ESPN deal. Yeah. So. Well, uh, I was watching, uh, like, because I follow BT Sport on Twitter, and they were showing Connor highlights, and it said that the pay per view was twenty five dollars. So that's kind of strange because they don't pay for pay per views over there normally. It's probably why it's such a low price, but I bet you Connor gets a huge hunk of that. Oh, for sure, twenty five bucks is probably not that big a deal. He's probably getting ten bucks on a fucking pay per view out of that oh, shit. Yeah, I wouldn't sure. even be surprised one bit. That Not well, one that kind of solves the problem too of all the all the people over in Ireland that that can't <clears> afford <throat> to get over here. But even his disclosed payday is a flat fee of five million dollars, which is yeah. a UFC first by yeah, that's just like three million dollars. Yeah. I don't know. If I think Brock's the got the most. Brock got two. two. Yeah. And then Connor got three. Well, no, Connor said he, he got, got three him. flat fee for three flat fee for Habib. Habib, but he said he made fifty. Yeah, Jesus. and his numbers on that Forbes was that was his that first up. fight with all the yeah. with all the uh, with all the ad revenue and stuff he was getting for proper twelve. Also, mm-hmm. man, that fight was so tough. Dude, Cowboy's getting a flat fee two million dollars. Yeah, well, Connor talks forget, a lot of shit, but that red panty night is real. Don't forget also. Uh, He's doing a lot of things with Bud- with Budweiser right now. There's going to be a special can that's only sold on that day yeah. with the Cowboy like logo on it or something like that. And then you see his freaking mouthpiece that he got made. It's Mm-mm. fucking Cowboy fucking kicking a, the Lucky Charms guy in the stomach, and fucking <laughs> nice. Lucky Charms are spilling out. That's for the fight. Like he's he's getting like Excellent. he's getting he's getting his fair share here as well. Dude, that's one thing you Connor really does. He he uses it as shit talk, but he does change a fighter's life when he fights Sometimes, him like that. Yeah. Like Especially look at a, Nate's a career. Well-established guy like Nate or Donald. Yes. Or like you know it's what I'm saying. The biggest thing that, could happen that to him. They're man. already ho- not exactly household names, but they're they're good enough. You know what I'm saying? They're good enough to where you can build a fan base around them because it's like a feel good story. It's like Cowboy's a hard work a hard working guy. He fights fucking six times a year mm-hmm. and he just gives no shits. He just Holds parties and records. then he fights. Yeah. You know, and then <laughs> so yeah. I just feel like w- with a guy like that it's easy to build the story and it's easier to like we talked about this a little bit earlier, but Connor's only doing the uh he's doing the press day and then the interview or not the interview, but the press conference on the uh, press conference, and then Wednesday. he's doing media day, which he hasn't done in like since the yeah, Aldo fight. But other than that, this is a kind of a less advertised fight. He hasn't hardly any. Right? He's not talking any shit. He's been nothing but nice about how he's nice towards him in the area. Yeah, interview. but here's the thing, though: they haven't been face to face yet. That's when we'll hear some of the shit talk. That's There's going to be press some press conference shit talk. will have aired um, after we record this episode. So that there's be gonna be a little bit of shit talk, I think. Not not like, not like disrespect, like ah, I fucking hate you, whatever, blah blah. blah. Like these had to with uh, Eddie and Poirier and people like that, where he dropped some fucking great one liners that will go down in his story forever. You know? Right. <laughs> but I think there will be the I'm gonna go out there and dust him in the first round, and Cowboy's gonna be like, "No, you're not." He's like, "Oh yeah, blah 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 blah." And that, then the shit talk will come. It'll be playful shit talk rather than... Yeah, than serious. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Kind of how, like, George and Nate are. Like, where he's like... Like, George's like, mm. I'm just going to go and baptize him. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right. like that's shit talk <clears throat> for sure. But it's playful. It's not... It's, it got it's really not mean playful, with though. Khabib, man. That yeah, shit got man, really got dark. dark. Got dark as fuck. Nobody liked that. Nobody wants that here. No. Connor's smart enough to realize that. I have a question for you that I was, uh, so I was listening to Brett Okamoto's year end in review with him, Arahuani, and Mark Ramundi, and they were talking about what was their biggest disappointment over the, over the last decade, and 
Brett Okamoto said the Connor versus Floyd fight because he feels like where Connor was when he beat Eddie Alvarez, that he feels like he had the possibility to contend to be one of the greatest of all time had he just continued to fight in the UFC at the level he was at. What do you think about that? Let me hit this pipe here <coughs> while my thoughts formulate <laughs> um, this London pound cake here. <laughs> I think that that point has a valid argument. But I also think that the inc- there's n- never going to be an opportunity equal to what Connor had when that fight was offered to him, and it would have been absolutely idiotic not to pursue it and take it when you look at the amount of cash and th- and spring that that gave him, even in a val- valiant losing effort. Like, he yeah. made more money than Brett Okamoto, Ariel Hawani, me, you, and half this fucking audience is ever going to make yeah. doing it. So how could you say that that I mean, I can see where you a disappointment as a fan. Yeah. But at the same time, it's impossible for me to begrudge what he earned. Cause look at what it did for him. Oh yeah, no, I. I and it's not like he went out and I got don't blame embarrassed. Him for the money part. He I, didn't even get embarrassed. He didn't even get embarrassed, yeah, dude. He did sure. well. He did. You can't even be like, oh, he went out and got slept in the first round, fool. Yeah. Like, no, nah, actually, got rope doped. He, 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 he got rope doped a bit. Right when his endurance was gone, Floyd turned it on. And then got kind of an iffy stoppage. He, he got pretty robbed on the standing eight count, but, well, you know, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. It's not the big Look deal. at all the fucking loot. We don't even know the extent of the loot and the trajectory. Like, how much of his whiskey is attributed to that fucking boost from Floyd when it comes Supposedly, to Supposedly, Connor his... was saying that he's going to be a billionaire by 35. I wouldn't even put it past him, so I can't. I get what Okamoto's saying, and that's probably pretty valid, but if it was some other stupid thing that didn't have all of the benefits attached to it that came yeah. with that Floyd fight, I'd be like, yeah, dude, dumb move. But yeah. I, I, I think it just sucks as a fan more than, like, I agree with your, with your point as far as the money side. I think he's just speaking as, like, a fan. I, I feel it, because I don't think Connor's going to be the same, ever been the same. I didn't think he was going to come back. I've said on the show a million times, that was it. You don't make $100 million and come back yeah. the same badass you were before. Sorry, that's life. Yeah. I think That's why I feel like this fight is so so pivotal for him. You know? It's so, huge, man. It's, it's, it's live or die, you know? And not only does he, he has to win spectacular. He has to go out and look like he did against Alvarez to recapture the fucking magic. He's got to go out and just yeah. smoke Cowboy, make him look a fool, and dust him. You or know? just go and dust him. Like, Which I, could very I'm still well not 100% happen. I'm on board that that's going to happen. Like, Connor's swinging me, dude. He said all the right things, except I don't know about that training thing. I'm a little iffy about that. About one. the what? The training thing. About how he's running his own camp or whatever, basically. That yeah, could just but, be talk from yeah, but Kavanaugh, how much is too. That, how much is that the actual training rather than is it the, the strength and conditioning with the whole McGregor fast and all that stuff? Is that, yeah, these is are that just words. We don't just, even know. You know. It's not like we're seeing footage where Connor's in there like, this is what we're doing today, everybody. Well, like, and to be honest, it's just words. Why so. is it such a big deal, though? Because it, what really is structured can any of those guys give him that he can't give himself also it's like he knows what he knows what to do you know what i'm saying it's not like yeah. he's and i'm sure they wouldn't sit there and tell him oh good job do this if he was doing something wrong i'm sure they would be able to being in his camp this long they'd be able to step back and say hey let's do this today instead you know i'm i by full control i think they just mean like win as far as like the structure and time in what they're going to do, you know what I'm saying, rather than it being like, oh, we're going to do whatever the fuck I feel like today. You That's know? the way I read it, too. You know, I feel like it may, it's like they all sat down together and laid out a laid out a, bl- a blueprint, but they all did it collectively rather than like John just doing it or mm-hmm. Roddy doing it or Connor doing it. It's more of like Connor took the lead but we all laid it out, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's always been that way for that camp. I don't think there's ever really been a time where Connor hasn't been kind of the the one that everyone follows. You know, and we're gonna get footage. Just watch. Connor wins. If, let's say Connor comes out, wins spectacularly, moves on. You don't think they're filming shit? 
Connor has his own media company. He's yeah. already released a documentary with the fucking Floyd one. Oh, of yeah. course, they're filming stuff. Anything yeah. dope happens, they're gonna fucking put out all kinds of yeah. all kinds of stuff for the public. Um. Well, before we make our final picks, how does Cowboy win? How what what is how does Cowboy win his fight? Is it with his wrestling? Does it come out? Does he take Connor down? No, does I actually he fucking think shoot with him. Kicks. I think it's kicks. I think if he can keep Connor <clears throat> at a distance, because. Here's the thing. Cowboy's really good with this switch kick and really good with that push kick to the body. If and like if you can keep Connor from closing that distance with that push kick to the body and then go up high, maybe he can stun him or do something. I mean, Connor's got a pretty good chin historically throughout his career. He's been rocked a few times, but he's never even when he's rocked, he's recovered every time. He mm-hmm. fucking took he got literally dropped by Khabib and then strikes rained down on him for fucking three and a half minutes. And, and he was being stopped. super sloppy and that's usually when a fighter gets yeah. like slept yeah. for reals when you're being sloppy and dumb yeah. and Connor was being sloppy and dumb right yeah. there. So I think if Cowboy's going to do it, it's going to be kind of like how he did with Isla Quinta. You know what I'm saying? Like, like maybe he'll start slow, but if he's able to pick it up in the third, fourth, and fifth, like he's... That's kind of it's kind of cowboy style, you know. He kind of comes out in the first, feels you out. That's what he that's, tends that's to what, do. Unfortunately, that's what's got him stopped in a lot of these championship bouts because mm. all the guys you fight are killers. They're going to go out. RDA and get the him job for the, done. For the 155 Pettis title. did the same thing, didn't mm. he? RDA, I mean, RDA just was all over him. And Dude, I'm sorry, Connor's Cowboys more vicious got than RDA. Iffy, yeah. Cowboys got some iffy performances in, in high level bouts. Like it, some it's iffy. undeniable. It's his history. Yeah. He has a lot of good, a lot of records. He's a great fighter, but he's also there's but a reason he, he didn't win the WBC like or the fight. UFC title fight. He also has fights like the Masvidal <clears throat> fight, where he came out and Masvidal just slept him. And that was like, Masvidal is a legit guy, but you know he looked terrible in that fight. Mm-hmm. Terrible. He has Poirier. fights like that, or Poirier, where he just looked terrible. Or not Poirier. I'm talking Gaethje. Gaethje. Same thing, honestly, when when he fought Ferguson, he looked flat, too. So you don't think like that Ferguson, his best it, bet is to go to the, the ground? Though, here's the thing is, like, I feel like as Cowboy has gotten older, he's gotten, like, I don't want to say less sharp, but he's gotten more big shots rather than where he used to be just, like, a constant onslaught. You know what I'm saying? All right. Like, that <clears throat> when he fought, when he fought Aya Quinta, I felt like, he won the fight because he stayed on the outside and hit him with the big kicks and the big big punches. Like, he went for combos and sat back. Like, whereas I feel like earlier in his career, he'd kind of walk people down. And, you know, it would be like a barrage of strikes and kicks and punches and elbows and everything like that. Whereas now he kind of sits back and then explodes. And then sits back, explodes. And I think some of it has to do with him leaving Jackson's kind of being on his own as well. People aren't taking that into fact. You know, like, you can say... That shit about Connor's camp, but Cowboy's literally in the same boat. He's he's in a he's in a situation where he's his own head coach, and he brings people into the BMF ranch, and they get a camp together, and then he deals with it fight by fight basis. Yeah, he I was watching his uh, some of his videos. I don't even know who these people are. Like his conditioning coach, I'm like, ooh, ooh. it was a, a woman I've never heard of. I know he's had that wrestling coach for a while. I can't remember his name, but no one. He's been a part of the team, but I don't know if he's been like the head coach. Now he's like a, the main guy. Like, I don't know what he's doing either, but yeah. Cowboy, I don't know. I think the opposite when it comes to his chances of victory. I think he needs to go in and take Connor down and see if Dylan Dennis is full of shit when he says Connor's jiu-jitsu is really good. Like, I get, think, like get I in there. I don't think it's anywhere near that. Trip him, take him down. I don't think it's, I don't think it's that do. easy, though. I don't think it's that easy. Everyone seems to think that Connor just gets taken down. Like, well, he it, should find out. It's not what happens. It's literally. Oh, I agree. I'm not saying that's throughout what happens. his career. He, I'm not he doesn't that. get taken down very easily. The only know. person who took him down easily was Chad Mendes. Well, even, look Khabib, even look yeah. at Khabib. Even look at Khabib. Khabib had a hell of a time taking him down. Every single time he took him down in that fight. You I'm cannot not saying, deny yeah. that. Like no I'm one just can saying, deny I think that. That's what his. Uh, he, I think he'd be better suited to that than striking with Connor. I think Connor would all strike the fuck out of. No, out of because think about it this way: that was Eddie Alvarez's Eddie Alvarez's game plan. He came out and he tried to wrestle Connor out the gate, tried to close the distance with his wrestling, and Connor picked him off on his way in, 
every single time. And then once he, he realized he couldn't get in with the grappling, then he went to plan B a minute into the fight. And I feel like that's a very similar situation Cowboy can get himself into if he were to try to go in there and grapple with him. Because one thing Connor does is he makes small distances and he just covers them so quick. Like Absolutely. Like when you're talking like a grappling exchange where I think if if Cowboy's going to take him down, his best chance is to maybe throw him on the feet. And if you're trying to close that distance, Connor closes that distance with the elbow, closes that distance with the big left hand. He's on fucking Queer Street 30 seconds into the fight. Oh, there's a difference between... I'm not saying you should run in 30 seconds in the fight and start shooting for takedowns, but I think his ultimate path to victory would be with takedowns. Trying to do level changes and get Connor down. I'm not saying he can do it, dude. I don't think Cowboy wins this fight at all. I think yeah. Connor's going to smoke him. Uh, I'm just saying in an ideal, like his well, ideal plan. Historically, I feel like that's kind of so, like that uh, would be what he, what he should do. I feel do. like it's something that people have always kind of like thrown at Connor, like, oh, you don't have wrestling, but he has wrestling defense. He just doesn't have very much wrestling offense. When actually he does kind of he took Holloway. We don't down. even know. He took people. That was down. years ago. Yeah. Years ago. He's got a submission victory in Cage Warriors. And that was years <laughs> ago. Like I'm saying, Connor could have improved leaps and bounds. We 100%, don't know. People yeah, talk yeah, shit. We're talking with him by and the Dan. Time is, he steps in the octagon, probably. Dan came in when he was fighting Aldo. Fight. Yeah. Aldo, a fucking grip ago, and the he's question, still rolling with the him. Question years is, though, later. How involved is Danis anymore, though? Because. He lives in New York now and only does his training camp. But Dan fights on the twenty fifth. He owns he fight he's fighting on the twenty fifth. I know he owns part of Bellator. Uh, that that's one thing. Uh, <laughs> you heard that shit, right? <laughs> Brother's like, I own, I own shit. That's why I fight catch weight. No, I'm Dude, a part did you of. hear that? They're thinking about opening a one seventy five and one sixty five division in Bellator. So maybe that's why they're. Moving him to 175 every fight because that's eventually going to be a weight class. Then he's going to be like, I created this shit. I'm, I'm I killing Dan as a bitch. I guarantee you that's what he's going to do. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just saying, um, I, yeah, I, I think Connor's jujitsu is probably way better than anybody thinks. But if I was Cowboy's team, I would be trying to, I'd be striking with him to start. You're going to feel him out. But then try to get in, yeah. land a few blows, go for a level change, get him it's down. It's going to be a good fight. See what happens on the ground. But I, think it's I don't think he stands though. a prayer. I think the first 55 seconds of the fight are dangerous for Cowboy. Oh, I, I agree wholeheartedly. I think personally it's going to end within the first. I think it likely ends in the first round, honestly. Um, two at the most, but I'm not going to be surprised at all to see if this goes similar to the RDA fight. All right, here goes the big question of the day, though. Tell what me. happens if Connor loses? Um. Well, then there's been a lot of questions before this fight about is Connor's star diminished, et cetera. Those questions will be answered with a yes after that. Yes. He'll still be a star. He'll still have shit. He'll probably still have good fights, but nobody's going to be talking about titles and Khabib fights and BMF fucking shit. He's got the Nate fight. I was going to say, I think that sets up the Nate fight perfectly. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's about what's left is the Nate fight. And if he wins the Nate fight, I feel like he's right back in the mix. If he wins the Nate fight, he'd be back in the mix. But he, he could, I mean, he'd be on a two, three fight if you count the Floyd fight. A three fight losing streak with his last win coming against Eddie Alvarez in 2016. That'd be yeah. terrible. Be rough. Terrible. Like his brand will hurt immensely. Yeah, for like, sure. Like it's pretty much the worst thing that could happen. Way worse than it could be, boss. Yeah. We'd be losing this. Especially after we just saw Gaethje smoke him. We've seen George smoke him. We've seen Poirier fucking beat him. Dude. When did Poirier fight? Poirier fought Cowboy, didn't he? I don't think so. Am I tripping? I think so. No, I could be. <laughs> it could be this London pound cake pound in my brain. <laughs> but either way, you get my drift, though. Yeah, for you get sure, the point. Yeah. Like, Connor can't lose this fight. No. He better hope he doesn't barely win. If it goes like the second Nate fight where he just, like, he wins, but it's like, damn, that'll be terrible for him, I think. Yeah. I mean, he could spin it off. It won't be devastating, but it, it won't. Ring I mean, rust, yeah, I guess. Yeah. It guess won't be good. Like ring rust. It'll sh- be like, well, let's we'll see what know. happens after the ring rust. Excuse. Well, one thing that Dana White said about the whole situation with Connor and 170 pounds is. He said that he wants to fight George, but also don't be surprised if you see George Mazadal and Nate Diaz fight again in 2020. So, is it that that Dana wants to see that car, the 
uh, Connor and Khabib fight after this one, or is it that George Masvidal wants to fight Nate again before he fights anyone else? Or is George Masvidal going to fight for the title before he fights Connor or Nate? That's a lot of ifs in there. You know what I mean? That's really what we got. Being like. as George is here in town in Vegas, here with us, he's going to be front row, and he's going to be front row for this fight. And if it goes as we all want it to, it being as Connor fans, like you and me, we're fans. I want yeah. Connor to go out and put on a spectacular performance. For sure. Um, I love Cowboy, but this, sorry, buddy. Yeah, this is not like we're on two different you. trajectories here. I want, yeah. I want to get back on the Connor train. I want it to be fun. I want to be talking crazy shit. <laughs> I want to see like three titles in three divisions, fucking all kinds of dope shit going on. Yeah, like yeah. it was, it was fun, man. It's great for the game. Yeah, for sure. I'm happy to hop back on that train. That's what I really hope happens. That's why I feel like if George fights I think Kamaru, if he wins, I, feel, yeah, I feel like if George fights Kamaru first and beats Kamaru, I feel like it makes the Connor fight so much bigger. Oh, it does. But what if he lo- he's not necessarily going to beat Kamaru Usman? I said maybe. That's not get. That's not a walk in the park. Never said it was, but. George Masvidal is on a beat path to the fucking title at this point. That'd be putting a hell of a lot of string. String. I mean, he's capable of it, but then to come back and beat Connor too, I don't know. I, th- I think he, I think you'd want to take the Connor payday while it's hot. What if Connor loses to somebody else in the meantime? Or what if Connor holds out? He's probably he looking at that two million dollars Cowboy just got. That's way, way more than fucking. That's like at least a four X. What did he get? A half mil for that fucking BMF? Seven hundred. Seven hundred. Each one of them got seven hundred. I mean, that, that's a big fat payday, and that was headlining. That was the biggest one of his career. Yeah, for sure. And that's a, that's a fraction of Connor's disclosed. The question becomes, will it be for the BMF title, though? Yes, despite all Dana's bullshit, 100%. <coughs> there's no way they let it. <coughs> and will the Rock they, be there? I mean, Connor and, and George. Dana can say what he wants. George is going to bring that belt with him, and Connor's going to be like, that's my motherfucking belt. And then when Connor, if Connor wins, he's going to demand it in the octagon. Give me my fucking bad motherfucker belt. Yeah, you know he will. Yeah, for sure. But I don't know if he beats George, but that's which a whole starts, other story. Which, which sparks another after fight brawl, where they <laughs> fight for the BMF title again. Because <laughs> imagine if he beats George, and then he fights Nate for the BMF title. Like imagine if the third what? Connor fight dude, would be no, for the BMF just, title. Exactly. That would oh, that would be perfect, dude. That'd be that'd sick. That would be perfect. Connor <laughs> just carries the BMF everywhere, dude. I get I guarantee you he would oh never God. fight for another weight. No. I, bet, I bet you would never fight another lightweight or welterweight like actual title fight again if he won a BMF. No, that'd be his third title and that would be his favorite. This is the McGregor belt I was telling you motherfuckers about. That's what he would say, dude. He'd say that BMF for like baddest McGregor fucker. (laughs) (laughs) Stupid. (laughs) No, but yeah, it would have to be, man. It would have to be for that belt. See, I want that ride. I like that shit as a fan, dude. That's awesome shit right there. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, fuck the haters. That's what I want to see happen. Just for my own <laughs> personal enjoyment. I don't give a fuck about Connor's enrichment. I want my. I'm talking about my. my I'm, I'm selfish. I'm talking about yeah. personal enjoyment here. Well, the question fuck. then becomes: What's more valuable, the BMF title or the real title? Depends on who's holding it. That's what I'm saying. Right now, who do? You, what do you think's more valuable right now, the welterweight title or BMF? Well, let's title? just say Kamaro Usman received a flat fee, and so did Colby Covington of a half a million dollars to fight for the real title. And Nate and Kamaru got Usman got seven hundred thousand yeah. to fight for the BMF title in the same weight division. Which one's more valuable? I think Nate got a million. Mm. I think Nate might have. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. Because Nate's got, Nate's got. Nate had because, more negotiating power. Yeah, in that because he of the made Connor it. fight. He made when the he BMF signed title. that deal. What he said because he signed that huge deal after the Connor fight. The first Imagine one. him fighting for the BMF because Nate would be like, "That's my title. I made it." And Connor's yeah. like, well, "I go hold it right here, bitch." Yep. That'd be so dope. <laughs> and then uh. you close Connor out in the year with Khabib in Moscow in December. Ugh, I don't know. That's he was saying he wanted that fight too. I don't want that fight. I'm but... down. I'm always down. You think Khabib fights Gaethje in the meantime? If he beats Ferguson, do they give that to Gaethje? Gaethje? No, because don't. Remember, he goes on Ramadan right after this fight with Ferg. Oh, so this is it before his end-of-the-year fight? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's fucking lame. Yeah. 
I think <sighs> that's what they were saying. That, I mean, whatever. I'm, I don't like me, but I'm not going to knock him I don't for know any anything, religion show. Uh, I don't know I anything just, about damn, like that how that correlates date wise. I don't know when that is. So it's only a 30 day period, but there's a lot as far as I know preparation before and after. But I don't know shit, dude. I'm talking on my ass. Yeah, I don't know anything about. I that. don't like be. I'm not disrespecting what he does for his religion, dude. Do, do yeah, what you got to do. What, that just, just sucks if we got to yeah, wait till the end of the year. Because in an ideal world, he'd fight Khabib. Or, I mean, he'd fight Gaethje and then finish out something with Connor. Yeah. Because I really want to see well, that. Well, I don't know because I wouldn't, I wouldn't be so quick to count Tony Ferguson out. He could be leaving with the championship in March or April, whatever it is. April, right? It's April. He could very well be leaving. Absolutely. With it. God. So there's a lot of possibility on the horizon yeah. here with these fights. It's an exciting time. I'd like to see Khabib move up to 170. It's We're like ultimately both Connor. picking Connor here, though, right? Yeah. So we're going back to this fight. It's Connor. For sure. What, what round do you think? You think it goes long? I'm taking Connor in the first minute and a half. Damn, you're picking minutes. Yeah, because I think he's just going to do what every other fighter's done to Cowboy in these big fights and go out and push the pace early. Cowboy kind of tends to shell up because he's kind of in the in the range building. The, uh, like, you know what I'm saying? He's kind of in the whole... I, I honestly, I hate to say this, but I think I think Cowboy's chin's diminished. I'm sorry, but I've seen him get wobbled more than I've seen him get wobbled in his entire career in the last six fights. One hundred percent. It's hard to deny dating that. back, dating back to the to George. After George, like he got rocked in the Robbie fight, got rocked when he fought fucking uh, Yancey Medeiros. It was like, it was a, he he won the fight eventually, obviously, against Medeiros, but it was like, they both came out and just started swinging. He got kind of wobbled, then he wobbled Medeiros and put him away. Yeah. And then, yeah. again, in the Hernandez fight, although he won the fight, that was also another one of those wars where he stood in the pocket and was willing to take the big shots and kind of push forward. That's not good at his age to continue to do that. And then, of course, Ferguson fight, he got t- his face yeah, sliced was, up. Ooh, ooh. That then, eye, yeah. Yeah, so it's oh. like, and then, of course, he got knocked out by Gaethje. So it's like, how much damage has he really going to be able to take after the last six fights of his that he's been in have all been kind of that same They've been pretty brutal. Thing. And I, I yeah. feel, I, lo- I love Cowboy, but I, I hate seeing him get smoked like that. I, I can't disagree. I think it's going to be first round pretty quick. I think Connor might go out there for a minute and... Before he blitzes, <laughs> but uh, ultimately, yeah. <coughs> well, there's not much of a card built around this fight. I mean, everybody, this is the Conor McGregor and Cowboy Cerrone show, as it should be. But it's pretty weak. I mean, the co-main event, I like both of these ladies, but it's a weak, it's a weak fight. <coughs> Just a fight with no implications. I don't even understand why they're doing it. I mean, they, they've already fought once before. I didn't think it was controversial, was it? Am I forgetting something? Was was Holly Holm versus Ra- Raquel Pennington one? Did Am I home, forgetting? Did Holm be here? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. I think they're just running out of people. That's the way that this fight made me feel as well, too. Like, they were just like, ah, well, these two are available. Well, same thing. It's like, like they're just kind of running out of contenders. Someone make a performance happen, you know? Yeah, for real. Um, I mean, again, no disrespect. I like both of them as fighters. I just don't like this particular fight. I don't really yeah, see I'm the take point. Home. Um, yeah, I can't pick against Holly Holm in this fight. Raquel Pennington is good. She's solid. She's made vast improvements, but it's Holly fucking Holm. Yeah. Um, Holly Holm is the second best of yeah. her generation. I yeah, like. for sure. Maybe not of all time, but of her generation, for sure. You were, t- were speaking in MMA, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. I can't disagree with that at all. Um, another good fight. We were talking about Anthony Pettis a little while ago. He's fighting. Yeah. Uh, Crazy oh, story fighting? that he was Fiera? having. Is that how you say his uh, name? Yeah. Fiera. D- yeah. Douglas Carlos Fiera, something like that. Yeah. I can't remember how you say his name. My yeah, bad. He's tough, though. He's a tough out, though. I've seen him fight plenty of times. Yeah. Pettis. Uh, he's good jiu jitsu. Yeah. Pettis told another weird story today, too, that he's in the process of suing USADA. Over yeah. him taking a a pre-fight sample before the Diaz fight, and where they gave him a bottle that he pissed in, that must have had some kind of cut, like some broken in. Yeah, because he he has to screw the up. lid back on it himself, and so yeah. when he's screwing the lid, the jar sliced his finger up, 
and like yeah. the webbing in between his fingers, oh. apparently. Uh huh. And, and so, his, mm. like, he couldn't warm up for the fight because they were trying to figure out a way to either stitch it or get it closed before the fight started. And then they got it glued, and then they tried to warm up, but it reopened, so they had to glue it again. So he couldn't warm up before the fight, and they, he said that's why he came out so slow. And he said also when he was in the pre-fight check out there when they checked his hand, the tape, that yeah. when, the, when the ref just you know extended his hand, yeah, that boom, it ripped, it, ripped it right there too. Yeah. Yeah, so he's suing. That's yeah, he's suing Usada. So that's kind of interesting. And he said it was his second test of that day, yeah, right before that, the fight. Well, because he said after they did the weigh-in, he uh, obviously drank a lot of water once he weighed in. They said that his sample was diluted, so they needed to take a second sample. I'm just, I, I, so yeah, fucking. He literally had to wait to pee. You twice. saw it, man. I'm like, I'm over it at this point. I'm, yeah. I'm over it. I'm tired of it. It's always something with these guys. I don't believe in the picogram nonsense. And that now, I mean, you you got jars slicing fighters immediately before they go out and fight. I realize that's a freak accident, but I yeah, mean, yeah, but that's come still on. stupid. It's like why? That's, why? why? He didn't even that? test hot. You can't yeah. even be like, oh, but look, we caught him. Yeah. You know, you didn't catch shit. And you cut him before his biggest fight. He could have. Could he not piss an hour and a half later after the fight? Like you yeah. can't. Like for real. Yeah, for sure. What, what do you think he was had in his system? Yeah. I feel like. I mean, come on. Yeah, come on. But he anyway, really, he's he's fighting. Uh, who do you like in that fight against him and Fiera? I think he's going to win. He's going to get back on track here. Yeah, this is back down at 155. He's dropping um, back down to lightweight after a brief stint at welterweight. Yeah. I think that's probably the best move as well. Yeah. Uh, on the prelims, headline and prelims, we got a fight. One of my favorite fighters, dude, Roxanne Modafari, Las Vegas local, yep. pioneer in women's MMA. This girl was fighting in Japan. For women's MMA before anybody knew shit, long before yeah. Ronda Rousey was fucking doing she anything was on in MMA. Two different seasons, of The Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, she's been around a very long time, and she's stuck with it. Like she was teaching English lessons to Japanese students to get by while fighting in Japanese MMA promotions in Japan. Yeah. Just as a a pioneer in women's MMA, this girl has been yeah. around a long time, and she's like the nicest person. Her nickname is a Happy Warrior. She's super fucking cool. Which you know what? You know what makes me think. Why the fuck did they put her up against I Macy? No, it's so, I feel <laughs> bad. Macy Barber is a killer. Macy Barber is going to fucking murder her. Unfortunately, oh. Macy Barber is training with Ben Askren now. You know that? Yeah, if you ever heard of Macy Barber, folks, she's a, she's a definitely one a name she to keep out upright, for. Yeah. She's a young up and comer in the division. Some would say possible future champion. Seven and myself. zero, lots of vicious vicious power, lots of vicious ground and pound. She's a beast, and uh. I, I don't like out. the fight at all. It's super yeah. tough for Roxanne Montefiore. I respect her wanting to get but in there and mix it up with to anybody. To the contrary, you could also say if Roxanne were to pull off some kind of victory against Macy, oh, it would just shoot her right back into the title picture. It'd be spectacular. But she has no business fighting Valentina. No, 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 no. I mean, I'm not... Dude, she's great, but everybody has a limit. And her skill sets have improved. Yeah. For um, sure. You know, she, she she started working out with the guys here in town. I think, uh, you know what it is? Is it John Wood over the there? It's the actual physical restraints, I feel like, when it comes to Roxanne. That she's she's a good fighter, but she doesn't do anything extremely exceptionally well. You know, she's not crazy fast. She's not crazy. Uh, she doesn't have a lot of power. She's got good jujitsu, but not great jujitsu. You know, she is she's good enough to carry her through any fight with any person in the world. You know, she's able to contend with anyone. But she doesn't have any overwhelming physical f factors that would push her past someone like a Valentina or, I, in my opinion, someone like Macy Barber. Because Macy has so much speed and explosion with her punches. Whereas, whereas Roxanne has all the perfect technique with everything she does. She doesn't have a much pop to anything. You know? Yeah, Macy Barber is not just any young fighter coming up. She's clearly something She's a special. Champion, I, feel like. I feel like she is too. She's clearly something special here. It's not like just. Roxanne Modafari can't beat a random young yeah. fighter. No, 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 no. She, this is someone special. And we're talking also about her, unfortunately, her division's ruled by and another Roxanne's someone the, special. Roxanne's also older now. You know, the, yeah. she's not in the prime of her career. It's it's really unfortunate that she's kind of one of the tweeners, kind of like Raquel Pennington and Holly Holm, whereas they came into the UFC as specialists 
who and then now that the UFC's evolved and it's the really the whole women's division has evolved so much in the last I want to say two to three years. It really has. That that their their abilities were once considered elite in a division that now they're considered the norm. You know. Yeah. And it's unfortunate, but they're still all pioneers of the women's division. right she's a and she's a live fighter and she can win oh 100 we could yeah. be talking next week about holy yeah. shit look at roxanne modafari yeah, just pulled she off she could pull off i mean she just beat shevchenko's sure. sister you know yeah. everybody thought she wasn't gonna do that she 100%. went out to fucking moscow or wherever and won over there yeah it was crazy you know and she but was undefeated she dropped, too but then she dropped but, one to, to jennifer maya exactly right after that so it's exactly. like she, she so th- that's kind of the theme with her career, unfortunately, she's got some good wins, but she's also got some bad losses. So I hope she, I hope she does all right. I'd love to be talking about a win, but <laughs> I just I'm not seeing it. Then we got a really good fight. Uh, I think this is the main event of the of the the, the early prelims. Early prelims. We have the early prelims, the prelims, and then the. Yeah. But uh, this yeah. is a really really good fight. Uh, we got Andre Feely taking on Sadiq Yusuf. And that's at uh, one, 145. 145. I think so. Yeah. Sadiq is a fucking hammer. Like, this is going to be a tough fight for Feely. Very tough fight for Feely. But the, on, on on the other side, though, Feely's a real game opponent. When it come, he, you know, he's got he's got the team alpha male guys behind him. He's got him. that new Uriah Favor tattoo. He's going to get the Favor yeah. power, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bold move to get a tattoo of a dude you, like, hang out with. <laughs> <laughs> up, Bold man. move it's indeed. Coach, like it's different, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's pretty. It's pretty. It's weird. not even like somebody you would just admire that you would never bump into. Even like that's a dude you see on the regular. Like what's up? I see. I see you but when I wake up. He's and... also tatted head to toe, so I don't really think he's. Dude, I'm not not gonna do you. I'm just yeah. saying it's a bold move. That's For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll get a shot at some point of like Faber standing next to Feely with the tattoo right there too. It's on his foot. <laughs> like on so, his something foot. from the corner, like where you could see like where Feely's up high and, and Faber's down low, and uh, it'd be beautiful. Stupid. It'd be beautiful. Oh god! But that's a great fight, though. Yeah, I, I think. I think uh, uh, unfortunately, though, I think Yusuf is going to beat the brakes off him. Yeah, I, I think it could easily go that way. Yeah. <clears throat> Yusuf's um, a really. Another one of these guys from uh, the Contender Series who's come in and really made a pretty big splash in the UFC so far in his career. You know, the Contender Series turned out a lot of fighters, man. Absolutely. I was pretty skeptical when they first were doing it. Honestly, I didn't even really watch it. Not, I'm not. I wasn't hating on it. I was just. Well, the guys are coming <sighs> in and winning. That's the biggest thing. But they're coming in and it, doing good. We're getting a lot not, of people. It's not yeah. that that. Uh, and honestly, there's also been some guys that. They've let walk away that have gone in and done things in other organizations. Like you got Brandon Longmain who was, who was on there, who's now yeah. signed to PFL. I'd like to see how he does. You know what I'm there. saying? There's, it's, and of course you have freaking Johnny Walker, like, you know Greg Hardy. Dude, Johnny Walker, people. did you see him just come out and straight blame his coach for that loss? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty that was, rough. That was, that you hear, was you hear tough, who, man. who wants to train him now though, right? No, who? Freaking uh, Faraz Zahabi. Oh, that'd be interesting. That'd be a smart move if you go up there and train with someone like that. Like you, you couldn't couldn't really lose in that situation. Absolutely not. I, I, I'm sure he'll probably do that then. Yeah. Otherwise, he's so yeah. I feel like just like the crop of talent they've brought in from from the contender series has really helped. Also, with the actual talent being funneled into the UFC, because before it yeah. was kind of we didn't really know. It gives people. A vested interest in in fighters when they don't necessarily know them, you know what I'm saying? Like the guys like that come onto the scene and become these big stars usually become stars as we get to know them as they fight. You know what I'm saying? That's why when you're a guy like McGregor when he got towards ACL like one after his second fight in the UFC, it was a huge blow to his like his actual like brand until he kept he kept himself in. In the media, talking yeah. about he was going to fill in for fights. Everyone knew he he wasn't medically cleared to fight, <laughs> but he was just putting his name out there constantly. That's what you kind of have to do nowadays if you're not being brought in by the Contender Series. I guess they said they're going to bring back the Ultimate Fighter, but I don't know when that's going to happen. But 
the the contender series kind of takes some shine off the ultimate fighter because the ultimate fighter is ultimately about the fights but there's so well, much yeah. build up if you're not into that type thing, of though. thing here's the thing when it comes to the ultimate fighter what the ufc did that was smart was although they made it seem like it's it's 12 guys in one house fighting for one ufc contract no in reality it's 12 guys fighting in one house the ufc is going to evaluate every single one of them exactly. sign every single one of them whether it be a, to a three fight deal or a long term deal is going to depend on how far you get in there. But really, when you think about it, if you go down season by season by season by season with the Ultimate Fighter, every single guy pretty much was signed all the way through. And they've and shifted it, the the show. It used to be back in the early is about the antics in the house, which yeah. the later seasons here has a small little bit of that, but it's more but about it takes, the history of takes, the fighters. It takes a personality. To be put in, and then what does the show become? You know, well, that's why I like the show now, though, because it, it shows a lot about the fighters themselves and like where they come from, their their oh, yeah, the, their, the, their family, why they're the, what's fighting. It called, the, the contender series. No, the tough. Oh yeah. Yeah, they they, they spend they a lot that, of time with they that. They do and that I, in the contender series I also, like that, though. Like they, I give a I get a vested interest. Yeah, I feel you like know. They do that in the contender fan. series a little bit now, though, too. Like a lot of their uh, main event fights are like the bigger like. Uh, main card fights at the contender series they go and they do they do like a little bit of the uh like family history or whatever like that guy anthony hernandez that was fighting on there unfortunately like his dad passed away and like they went into like his old childhood and like yeah. all kinds of shit like that so i don't know i really just think it depends on like we were talking about getting a vested interest in these guys coming into the ufc well sadiq yusuf has definitely been a good addition from that show without a doubt and we're both in agreement thinking he's he's yeah. likely to beat he's on the road. andre feely here in this last uh this last kind of big fight that's on this card that we're going to talk about yep you know, I want to talk a little bit briefly about the card after this, and then we'll circle it back around to the Conor McGregor and Cowboy fight and kind of talk about our final thoughts here before we wrap up the show, Paul. But after this, we do have a fairly good heavyweight uh, on January 25th showdown with Curtis Blades uh, and Dos Santos. Uh, Junior like Dos Santos coming back from that leg infection that he is now saying nearly, ki nearly killed him. Yeah, that's crazy. that was some serious. Staff well, is crazy. That man. shit is disgusting too. The, it is. It's the, horrible. The fucking photos he shared were nuts. The, that, that's yeah, absolutely. You can look them up online. Google no, Junior Dos Santos' leg if you, you got a strong to. stomach. Yeah, that's pretty that. fucking foul, man. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> it was bad, man. That's scary. I can't imagine having to deal with that. That's some frightening stuff. Well, that's what. Like a lot of these guys, it's crazy when they come back. And, that ball? Yeah, it's crazy yeah. when they come back and fight right away. Like, like you know what fight I was watching the other day on on uh, just randomly on YouTube? What's up? Because they had the Brock Lesnar and Alistair Overeem fight on there, mm, and I was just was sitting crazy. there thinking, like, Brock Lesnar, why the fuck did you not take more time off after Absolutely. you had diverticulitis? Like, because if you watch that fight, Alistair just starts it out whack right away, B -b fucking body kick. Right to the intestines, and you just see Brock's face go from oh shit. Yeah, he, he just, turned ashen after that, yeah, and then the fight was done, pretty so. much done. Like, so it's like it really just begs the question: is like, how healthy is Dos Santos's leg? You know what I'm saying? Because he could still have dead tissue in there. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And what if what happens if Blade comes out and just delivers some monster spot. kicks to that Ooh. leg in the early? But. Then that's going to take the Santos think, power away. I don't think Blades is going to want to stand with him, though, to be honest. No, I mean, he's he's got a great wrestling game. Yeah. But uh, Junior's takedown defense is no joke, though. He's he's solid. I mean. Solid. Like, I don't know. I've heard some people question his, his jiu-jitsu black belt. I've heard these rumors as well. Yeah, I've heard that. Like. So I don't know I, how legit I don't that know. is. I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't know either, so I'm well. not going to make it. Make my decision based on that. I'm just gonna go with this: is Dos Santos is kind of in, on the backside of his career, whereas Blades, although he's he's run into some shitty situations against Ngannou twice, he's more or less been pretty dominant when it comes to these bigger fights. Like if you really look at it, he's got the two Ngannou losses. Other than that, though, he's got the big Alistair Overeem win. He's got he's got some pretty good like like co-main event wins you know what i'm saying where he he could possibly get right back in the title picture mm -hmm. so so yeah, you're I'm picking blades. blades yeah 
Yeah, I like Blades and FI2. We're not disagreeing on any of these things. I like Blades. Um, the other kind of major, at least majorly interesting fight for me on this upcoming card I wanted to touch on was uh, we've got Rafael dos Anjos coming back against Michael Chiesa at 170. I like 170. this fight a lot. I like this fight a lot. This is a fight that could have happened at 55. I'm happier it's well, happened yeah. at 170. I think that's yeah. better for both guys. Yeah. Um, I like Chiesa. On paper, if I had to say who who you think should win this fight, I would say Chiesa. But I'm going to pick this purely with my heart. I really think and really just want, I just want to say Rafael dos Santos to win. I don't I, like don't Michael Chiesa. Don't get me Chiesa. wrong. I don't, I don't really like I want Michael him Chiesa to get fucking at all. Smoked. I don't like him at all. But in his last fight against Diego Sanchez, he just showed... Like he he's physically caught up to his to his like ability. Well, I agree. As, I think he should win this fight. Artist, and I feel like he, I'm he still picking Dos Santos. I think Dos Santos is going to come out with something to prove because all these losses he's that's been taking in these big fights and be yeah, like, no, nah, I'm still legit, motherfuckers. And he's going to come yeah, out. Dos Santos does have some questions to answer here. He's going to sure. come out and fucking beat him down. Yeah, beat him down early. That's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> I realize that's unlikely to happen, but that's yeah. my pick. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I'm going to hit this pipe in here. And, uh, so let's, let's circle, circle back around here to our final thoughts. So this yeah. is the big show week. You know, this is it. It's the, the return we'll of Conor McGregor. be at the McGregor. on Friday. If you guys are out there, come say what's up. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I didn't think this day would come. I really didn't think Conor was going to come back. He's got uh, me pretty much on board with the that he's going to win. I mean, I'm going to be pretty disappointed if he comes out and what gets smoked. What if this is just the end, the start of the second McGregor era, and he just comes back oh, and is... That's what I hope. I ain't going to lie. I hope he comes out. I hope he wins this. I hope he goes and wins the BMF title, and then I hope he fights Nate Diaz for it. That's what I want to see. Wouldn't so that no be dope? no more Khabib fight? No, fuck Khabib fight. Just let Khabib but ride off into the sunset. Have, just retire. think about how much money <clears throat> you can make fighting Khabib in Moscow. And then take that second loss. It's irrelevant. In Moscow. It's irrelevant. That's Just get ridden like a horse again. That's a $100 million fight Submitted. right Submitted. You can't deny it's a $100 million fight. It's a $100 million paycheck for him. But what about, can he, what if about he, the future he really brand made, damage? If he was really going to make $80 million for this fight like he says he's going to, it's a $100 million fight when he fights Khabib. What about the brand damage with the loss, though? It's not really, because if Khabib is continuously undefeated, it will not be seen as like, oh, Connor sucks. Everybody's gotten defeated by Khabib at that point because if they fight, it's going to be after he beats Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson's everybody's saving grace, honestly. We cannot sit here and not. God, I hope Tony think. wins. Tony Please. is everyone's saving grace if we're talking about wanting Khabib to lose. Please, Tony. Because Tony's the only one who has this equal ground. It'll be a beautiful day. I'll be, dancing. I'll be dancing in my fucking living room when Tony Ferguson wins. He deserves it, damn. Let alone just the fact that I, I don't, I'm not a Nurmagomedov like Madoff fan. And dude, how but great, I respect his game. Though. I think would, he beats Conor how great again. Would be a, how great would a Justin Gaethje Tony Ferguson five round title fight be? That'd be pretty sick. There's there's situations where if Khabib loses to, to Ferguson, it fucks his whole career up because then Conor doesn't really value him because he's like he's not the champion. Right. And then we got Connor would possibly just do what you were talking about. Maybe fight Nick, uh, George, possibly beats George, rematches Nate, and then walks off at age 34, probably. Because those will be monsters. He goes on a win streak like that, he'll be monstrous. Yeah. Monstrous again, especially with his kind of improved attitude. I think he's learned some lessons with his behavior. You think he'll really fight till he's 35? Um, I, I doubt it. It's four more years. He said he's gonna fight three times this year. I don't think that's happening. I think he's fighting once, maybe twice. I don't see the three fights. I would be shocked. <coughs> I see a win here in the BMF fight. Frankly, I, I don't really see, the BMF fight. I, I don't know. Depends a lot on how he looks against Cowboy. Everything rides on this. The McGregor brand, not it's not like failure or success level. It's not like, yeah. oh, he's done. His brand is over. Like, no, no, no. He's a superstar. It, he'll, he survived losses before. Yeah. He'll continue. Yeah. But, like, he's done as far as, like, the McGregor era. Yeah. Like, that like, that hit that yeah. point in MMA when he was mm-hmm. king of the fucking world, that's yeah. done. Yeah, I feel you. That makes more sense. I see what you're saying. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I think this is the beginning of era number two. Oh, I think it is too. I really hope so, man. I'm fucking. I'm excited. It's the rebrand. <laughs> That'd be dope. It's everybody the loves a comeback everybody story. Everybody loves man. a fucking rebrand. <laughs> they do. They, and, and everybody loves a comeback story. Oh, yeah. And if he pulls it, that'd be sick, man. And I'm one of those people. <laughs> Me too. Me too, my friend. We'll know next episode. Yep. Next week, we'll be talking hopefully about the rebirth of the Conor McGregor era. Hell part yeah. two. Well, I think that wraps up the show today. I think it does. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. You can catch our show Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Uh, Central Time, 6 p.m. Uh, here on the West Coast, 9 p.m. on the East Coast, WBUZ 95 on the Orange Radio app or radio.net. YouTube, so, Google Play. Wherever you get your podcast MMA. from. Com. That's right. Head over there, hit the gear button, buy yourself some shit, support the podcast. Don't be a dick. Peace, everybody. <laughs>